Sunday. Sunday. Do, 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 do. Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Line TV and welcome to another QA live stream. It's been a while since I've been doing one. You guys, sorry for not upload today. I have been working on some other videos. They have been taking a while, but you're gonna be enjoying them when they do get released. So it's good to see everyone and yeah, it's looking at the, the webcams looking kind of decent with the quality and that. So finally, always had to pattern up, isn't it? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. How's everyone doing? Jay Mojo, what's good, man? CFC, Ivan, hey man, Zeno. Yes, Zeno, you good. Jordan Davies, hi everyone. Well, whoops, sorry, I've, uh, okay. Yes, what's up everyone? Theatre of Streams. Yes, Will, thank you, Will, and you guys. Will sent me a photo of how he watches my videos on Twitter. His setup is amazing. Sexy ass 4K TV. Amazing setup. Oh, yeah. That's literally goals right there. One day, you know what? Maybe one day I will show you guys my setup in my room. Just so you guys can see what it's about. But yeah, Will's Will's setup is definitely goals right now. Shakiri, yeah, saw the game, saw the game. Double up mode, double upload maids are up for it. <laughs> yes, Ben. Thanks for that, bro. I want the 4K TV. Yeah, I really talk. This is why I need to start caring about my health a bit more so I can look better on these screens. Yes, how's everyone doing? Good to see everyone here. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's actually so crazy when everyone like shows love and everyone's like, hi, how are you doing? Hey, hey. It's weird because like, you got to think to, like two years ago, I was just like, you know, I, I wasn't making videos. I, I, I still am a normal fan. I'm still a normal guy. Everyone from the channel that's met me in real life knows just how down to earth I am. But like, um, again, you know, I, I've always had friends, but I've never been the guy that always that has like, you know, tons of friends. Uh, you know, prop, you know, super super social as well. So, uh, it, it has it always takes me like by surprise a lot, and it takes me aback to like you know all the love and support for the content. So it does mean a lot. I do appreciate that, and yeah, it's. it's, it's it's kind of like surreal at times, I'm not going to lie. But you guys, that's enough love everyone's showing now. Let's not beg it. Come on, let's start. Send me some questions. You know what it's about. It's a Q&A live stream. You guys know what the deal is. If anyone wants any question prioritised, then send a super chat. Nothing crazy. You know, I don't ask for nothing. It can be 50p if you want your message sent. You guys know what the deal is. But I'm going to start answering questions right now. Starting with Adrian Samaru. Is Pjanic rumours true? Now, with Pjanic, again, uh, I did release a video yesterday. Uh, so, you know, it was pretty up-to-date. It was pretty current. So, if you want the full context on that, I suggest you watch that video later on, bro. But with Pjanic, again, as I was stating in the video, I kind of think it's not necessarily a ploy. Actually, you know, it, it kind of is a ploy to try and get a better contract. So obviously, uh, he's not happy with the 6 to 7 million that Juventus have offered. He feels that he can earn a bit more. I think with Juventus, obviously... Um, you know, releasing how much Pjanic should be available for. That's basically a, you know what, Pjanic, if if we never get an agreement and you don't like what we offer you, here's your price tag. As long as we get that, we're happy. Because, again, Juventus have been trying a lot to get Milinkovic Savic from Lazio. Lazio have slapped a 100 million price uh, price tag on him. And if Pjanic, knows, uh, if Pjanic goes, I can imagine uh, Juventus just signing Milinkovic Savic if they could. So... That's everything happening right now. But you guys, I'll be honest to... I'm not, I'll be honest. I mean, you guys, you get the concept of the transfer news videos. It's only every now and then I get a few exclusive news surrounding targets and stuff like that. You know, like the Leon Bailey video, like the Marshall video. But, but um, you know, most times it's just to give my thoughts and opinions on the news that's been released. And I'll be honest, from the people that I, that I know... I haven't really heard anything about many Serie A players being linked. And you guys, I say this all the time and I stress this all the time. Sorry, ain't the type of manager that demands targets or really cares. As I said, you guys, I feel like I do give you a lot of good quality information. Remember, like back in April, I think it was like 12th of April when I first released that. We had that secret meeting with Sari. And remember, you guys, a few weeks ago, it finally came out that, you know, obviously De Laurentiis found out that Sari was having secret meetings with us and he wasn't happy with that. And that was the start of how their relationship started to go downhill. But um, but yeah, you guys, as I kept saying, 
I mean, we're speaking to guys like Jardim, uh, Tuchel, uh, you know, Enrique, etc., etc. They all got very similar questions. The club wanted to find out uh, what their uh, plans were in terms of player development and what their plans were for the youth team, if they knew any of the players. They basically just wanted to clarify if the coaches were going to complement the long-term goal that Chelsea are trying to implement. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, that Chelsea are trying to implement at this moment in time right now. So, again, I'm telling you guys this because, again, take this piece of information we are sorry isn't really demanding any type of targets he already has an idea of the type of players that the club will be pursuing uh he's given some of his opinions as well uh i do find it a, you know, some of these reports of you know, every napoli player has been linked with us guys like planet as well it's not going to be happening in my opinion and uh yeah it's just how the i don't i don't understand how the italian media really works in my opinion of course i I'm only a YouTuber. I don't know everyone just yet. I'm lucky with the people that uh, I'm in the industry that I know. But um, but yeah, I'm not really expecting... I'm not expecting guys like Pjanic or Manolis or stuff like that. The Rugani thing, I haven't heard anything about Rugani at all. Again, I stress that I'm not going to know every single thing, but I haven't heard anything about Rugani. It doesn't seem, to that, that, it doesn't seem like that's really a move we're trying to make. So... Uh, Again, a lot of this stuff is taking me by surprise, especially the Manolis one too. That's really taking me by surprise. But uh, but yeah, I, I think I've been getting some super chats. I keep waffling on way too long, so sorry for that. But uh, as I load up the super chats, the Mega Ostrich, would you rather have Koulibaly, Manolis or Rudiger if you could have one? That's a hypothetical question. If I could pick, I would pick Koulibaly because I think he's the best one out of the three. Um, Abdi, as you saw what you... Okay. T147, Barkley is wasted. Um, he's washed at the same... Yep, I don't understand the point of him. As I said, and as Conte said himself to, didn't Conte say in that press conference uh, uh, about uh, you know Barkley being an investment signing? So when the manager's saying stuff like that, it really just sums up everything, to be honest. Oli Glanville, yes, bro. Came out today that there's not been any contact made with him uh, from some Italian media. I'm not too sure, to be honest. I'm not too sure. I'm not hearing anything just yet. I actually haven't been hearing from my source for, for like the past two, three days. He is in Russia right now. He's at the World Cup. Uh, so it's understandable. But uh, again, the Italian media, I'm, I don't know. I've been, I've, been, I've been reading a lot of the reports. Obviously, I'm constantly keeping up to date with all the news. And a lot of the things they're constantly throwing at us is just recycled stuff that just gets restructured a bit more. So... Uh, it's good that a lot of you guys look past it and don't really get excited by it. But uh, again, it makes sense from a business point of view. It's a summer transfer market. Obviously, it's a good way to get easy clicks and views. And uh, obviously, that gets monetized when you click on them type of stories. But I'm, really not re I'm not really seeing anything in regards to any of that stuff. So uh, I'm just taking it uh, with a pinch of salt so far. But yeah, answering the super uh, super chat questions. Will Rayner, thank you, bro. Uh to go towards the 4K TV. <laughs> nice, man. Thanks for that. Next super chat, Mohammed. Any update on Sari? Suffering is continuing. Uh, everything with Sari, it's, it's kind of been the same thing, you guys. Uh, this is why I'm not releasing a Sari video every single day. I could if I was a real scumbag and had no morals. I don't know. Maybe if I... if. You know what? When I start doing that type of stuff, that's how you guys know that I'm literally flopping in life right now. And I'm desperate for anything. But um, but currently I'm good. And uh, again, the updates has been everything I've been telling you guys. There really isn't anything new right now. And uh, yeah, th there's literally no update I can give you guys. I mean, it's just a matter of time until the thing's finalised, to be honest. Rob Stevenson, thank you for that super chat, bro. Will Chelsea, uh, will the CFC boards, no, will CFC take on boards what Ruben said about game time, I 100% think they will do that. I mean, it's not the first time that players have put pressure on their careers. Uh, the recent example is Andreas Christensen. Let's not forget that when he, whilst he was at Borussia and watching Gladbach, we weren't quite too sure if he was going to be coming back. Well, you know, I had a bit of an idea that he would. But, um, but yeah, you know, if you were to read the press reports, for example... It was constantly, uh, you know, there was doubt in, in regards to where he was going to be playing. A lot of big clubs were being linked to him as well. But let's not forget the stuff his dad was stating. And he was stating that 
um, we are in contact with Chelsea. If we don't get the certain demands we're looking for, then Andreas will think of moving. So it's not the first time a player has basically threatened the club. And I think Ruben deserves to do that. I think if he wasn't to be in the first team for next season, the shit he's doing now, playing, uh, getting into the World Cup as well, and we dismiss all of that, I mean, he's in his right to want to leave us. So, uh, so yeah, there's been a history of players, obviously, uh, putting pressure. I mean, we're seeing it now with Eden Hazard as well, putting pressure on the club to try and seal targets and start doing the right stuff. Okay, let me answer some more questions. Tony Perez, Morata to stay, Marshall or Riccardi, who's the best striker fit for Sari? You know what? The safe answer is Riccardi. And I say that as I as I say in all my videos, you know, look at how Higuain really went to another level playing in a Sari system. Of course, uh, you know, you're dominating the play. You know, the poacher style of striker does complement a Sari system. And those types of strikers really complement a Sari system a lot more because they're very, very clinical. They're not necessarily about link up play or dropping deeper to let other people come in. They're not really about that. It's about finishing off moves. Uh, I think Akadi could do that, but the same time as what Mercedes has been doing at uh, at Napoli, I think Marshall could easily replicate that. I mean, his finishing really is underrated. He's a very, very clinical finisher, especially inside the 18-yard box. You know, anytime I look at shots, sometimes when you look at like uh, you know the the shooting statistics, it doesn't. It doesn't differentiate whether it's in the 18-yard box, if it's outside the box, if it's from 25 yards away. It just the average from all of those shots. So this is what I mean. It's good to understand a bit of the context. I think Marshall's are one of the best finishes inside the box in the league, to be honest. I think that he can definitely complement the Sari system. I think Sari will switch it up a bit. If you've got someone like Hazard and Marshall, I just think it's common sense that they would be interchanging positions and taking turns. And that front three, I mean, it's... a it's a problem. It's definitely a problem. And Golo Footballnini uh, is an ultra fan. Yep. Abicek Higuain is good. Yep. yep. He is a good player. Higuain looked Chelsea against Croatia. Looked clueless against Croatia. I mean, the whole team did look clueless. The synergy wasn't there. Kwame. Marshall can be twice the player Mertens was under Sarri. One, one million percent. One million percent. Worldwide shells. <laughs> hey, Conte tweet. I mean, uh, oh, real talk. How, how can I even forget the Twitter, bro? Jeez, Worldwide Chelsea, you guys. You, you know I like to shout out the other Chelsea channels that are trying to do their thing and trying to come up as well. Obviously, Worldwide Chelsea is his Twitter handle. Uh, click on Worldwide Chelsea, obviously, to check out his live streams and to just catch some different thoughts and opinions. And you know what? A few times we've got Nando's. We know each other outside. Bless guy. Cool guy. It's a bonus. Other questions. Um, what other ones? Andrew Salmon. Would Golovin be a good signing? He's had a decent World Cup. I like Golovin. He's a good player. Uh, I, I don't know that. For me personally, any time I look at Golovin, I keep thinking about Ruben. Because I, I I know people make up the argument that oh, it's about squad competition, etc. Et but the reality is only three guys can get into midfield. Personally, I prefer if it's Ruben getting most of the game time. Uh, I don't see Golovin. I mean, maybe Golovin could. I, I can imagine maybe Sari wanting to switch up the midfield if he wanted to. I think ideally, it'd be great to have someone that can dictate the game a bit in that Jorginho role. I definitely think that's a priority when it comes when it comes down to Sari. I think if Golovin signs, it would depend if other players left. So, for example, if Drinkwater, Bakayoko and Barkley left, then it would make sense to sign him. I see some of these guys leaving. I don't see all of these guys leaving. So I don't think that Golovin really is a priority right now. Uh, Jay Mojo. Mason Mount is the same level as... I mean, yeah. I mean, Mason Mount can fulfill the same role. I mean, honestly, I... I mean, there's so many great videos out there. I know a lot of you guys see these videos, especially from CFC videos. He's constantly got videos, individual player highlights of all the line players doing their thing. Is I'm always watching his channel all the time to see how these guys are doing. So, uh, I mean, Mason Mount, is, if he was told to play tomorrow, the guy's ready. He's an exceptional player. And, I mean, the England national team now, you know, they're finally producing English guys that don't play like English players, you know? That's the exciting thing. Um, Kang, 
Nini, please, what's your country of origin? I heard you said a Nigerian slang called Wahala. <laughs> you know, I'm from Ghana. I've got a bit more in the locker, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not one of them guys that's going to start gassing like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a quarter this, I'm a fifth this. You guys don't even need to know what I'm a quarter of. I'm just, I just say I'm half Ghanaian, half English. So that's the easiest thing to say. Arvi, Nini, which player from the World Cup has impressed you and also might want Chelsea to take a look at him? Well, there's been a few guys that have impressed me. They're not necessarily guys I'd want us to sign. Um, there's a right back that plays for Morocco. What's his name? Uh, it begins with a B. I forgot what his name was. But he was he was really impressing me. And then I found out that he's actually uh, a centre-back. I, I Honestly, I was blown away. I thought his technique, his pace. He looked like a natural playing as a right back because he was okay with carrying the ball and trying to beat his man if he had to. So uh, he was definitely an interesting player. What other players have set out for me? Uh, Jared Chev, the guy on loan. Uh, not on loan, the guy at Villarreal. He's looked very good for Russia when he's come on. Uh, other players that have caught my eye, um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. Who else has stood out for me? Of course, Croatia. That Rebic guy, he's looked decent. That doesn't mean he's a Chelsea standard of player, in my opinion, but he has looked good this tournament. Uh, there's been a few other guys as well. Who else has, has stood out? Um, that Sainsbury guy, Sainsbury of Australia, he's been very good defensively as well. Um, Moyes looked good for them as well. I mean, there's definitely been a, there's definitely been a, quite a few good. I mean, Lozano. Let's let's not forget Lozano as well. Mexico the bits. Let's not forget them. Definitely been some very good performers in the World Cup. I mean, again, even Shakiri. I mean, he's any time it comes to international tournaments, Shakiri is or is either scoring goal of the tournament or he's performing at a very high level. And yeah, that they're, they're my thoughts so far. But currently, there's no one I'm seeing that is having a great tournament that's on the level uh, of Chelsea, in my opinion. Um, Joseph, 25. No way Ruben and Mason Mount is better than Golovin. Uh, I don't know. It's not even about that. I just think that, um, you know, I don't know. It, 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 it'd be good for us to start developing these talents. I'm sorry. I mean, Mason Mount, Golovin, is there really a difference? I'm not quite too sure, to be honest. I mean, stylistically very similar. Amazing shooting from distance. Great at carrying the ball. Great dribbling styles as well. This is what I mean. I think a lot of us need to really watch the players that we do have before we start making these assessments. Um, Alex Ayala. I love saying that name. Ah, oh, shit. I missed it, bro. Sorry, man. AKA Wetman Spencer. I feel we should loan Mason Mount to the bottom 10 Premier League clubs so he can improve. What's your thoughts on that? You know what? When it comes to learning out players, it's not just about playing in the Premier League, you know. For them to have a successful loan, they need to play under a manager that is obviously going to have faith in them. They need to play in a system that gets the best out of them. Too often, guys like Boga and Baker are prime examples of guys that aren't using systems that complement them. I mean, the reason why Baker didn't even play was because Middlesbrough moved away from a 4-2-3-1. They didn't need his characteristics in the team anymore. And that was the biggest disgrace, in my opinion. Boga as well, the guys are number 10. He's constantly playing as a winger all the time in teams that have very shit attacking styles of football. So, uh, so yeah, but um, but it's not just, it's about the quality of a bottom 10 team. I don't know. If if uh, Lukanovic stays at Fulham, it could be, actually, no. It actually could be interesting to see Mason Mount playing there. Obviously, playing in London, he plays a very expansive style of football, very good football as well. It's definitely a system where he can express himself uh, to his highest potential and he, and he can show what he can do. But I think when you're showing that you're one of the best players in Holland and when you're seeing guys like uh, uh, like uh, Cliver signing for Roma and you'd probably say Mason Mount had a much better season than him, why is it that our guys should be settling for bottom 10 teams? But then let's say some random kid playing... Uh, not Random kid now, that was too rude, of course. He's not a random kid. Justin Cliver is actually a very good player. But why is it that, um, you know, when you're not affiliated with Chelsea, uh, you're a much better player than what we have? I don't personally agree with that. And uh, I definitely think that it's a style of argument that should kind of not be the case anymore. I think we need to move away from that type of discussion. Um, other questions. Imzi. Yes, Imzi Nini. Who do you think should start for England versus Panama and the future games? Good lords. Uh, I, again, I, I just want to see Ruben in midfield, bro. 
That's it for me. Uh, Misha, we need loans to the Bundesliga. Exactly. Look at Sancho and Christensen. And look at the amount of young players that play in the Bundesliga. There's a ton that play there. It's a very complimentary league. Very good styles of football play there as well. What really annoys me, and you guys you hear me say this a lot, we've had guys with very successful loan moves at certain clubs. Why is that relationship not continued? You're telling me Christensen's on loan at BMG for two years. We sell uh, freaking Thorg and Hazard to them as well. And you're telling me that not one player last season went on loan to Borussia and watching Gladbach? What's the point? Why agree to two-year loans and stuff if we're not trying to get something, you know, if you're not trying to get anything from that uh, for, for our long-term future, you know what? I, it just makes no sense. It baffles me. I think uh, we need to start getting more of these relationships because then our top guys like, uh, you know, Mount, he goes a whole season. I'm going to feel comfortable. Oh, well, Hudson Adore, they say we need a winger. You know, he, he's going to suit playing there as well. And, and you know, this is what Man City are doing. This is what I keep saying. Man City keep doing the things that we do, but doing them better. The amount of uh, feeder clubs they have is ridiculous in all these different countries as well, especially in La Liga as well. We should have been tight. I mean, if we're going to pursue money from a loan system and loan army, we need to get more feeder clubs. I don't understand why it's been so difficult. I really don't. I kind of feel like we keep pricing out too many clubs all the time. And uh, again, you guys, the cold reality is the loan system is literally a money maker. This is why there isn't much care at all when it comes to loan clubs. So it's disappointing. It's disappointing. Um, Okay, Hamza, what about Sari? As I said, no new updates. John Somba, likes of Sampali need never be coaches. No, I'm definitely not agreeing with that, John. I, to, this is what I mean. We can't be reactionary all the time. The guy was doing bits at Sevilla. Let's not forget the amazing job he did with the Chilean national team. I mean, they won, uh, you know, the, the Copa America as well. Playing fantastic football. I just honestly think that well, again, it's something I'm I'm looking into. But, you know, a few things I'm noticing is the fact that there isn't really any midfields at all. And you, midfield is the, is the key thing. And then I look at Argentina's front three. Their front three players are used to playing in the systems where, you know, they keep possession of the ball. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think that they have the right personnel, really, to play that type of San Paoli football. I think sometimes, especially when it's a national team uh, manager, you need to adapt to what's better for the players. Don't don't adapt the players to fit your system. I mean, I get it. I do understand. Obviously, what you did with Chile was ridiculous. One of the best international teams in the world under him. What he was doing at Sevilla as well. I mean, you know, let's not forget. And Zonzi's become, uh, you know, a, a European class midfield player. You know, that can dictate a game. I mean, this guy is a very good manager, so uh, I'm, I'm not using this Argentina job against him, to be honest. I'm Let me check some super chats. And you guys, if you're a Patreon subscriber, remember, I will be answering your questions, so don't forget that. Jordan CFC, hey Nini, what do you, when do you think we'll sack Conte? Appreciate that, bro. And honestly, when it's coming down to the sacking reports, you guys saw my video release, I think, four or five days ago, where I told you guys that my source said that uh, this weekend... He should be gone. Uh, at the time, a lot of media were reporting on this as well. From what I'm hearing... Actually, I can't say from what I'm hearing because I actually haven't spoken to my source for the past uh, two, three days. He is at the World Cup right now in Russia. So, you know, it's understandable. You know what I mean? But, um, but, uh, but yeah, you guys, I can't give you a time frame. As I said, I was told tomorrow, but we know the nature of this transfer in particular. That something's changing all the time. Something's being longed out every single time. Uh, I don't want to make the mistake of being too overconfident. I mean, I do feel confident that Sari is going to be the manager. I think all of us feel that. But I'm not confident about when the thing is going to be announced. But um, I'm hoping that I am going to be lucky enough to try and find out in advance or even on the day before anyone else. So uh, let's see. Let's see. You know what I mean? But I mean, ugh, let's be serious. I just kind of wish we just paid the eight million and got it done and over with. I still personally feel that it seems like a waste of time, really, to save on two million. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I feel that we could have just paid the eight million, and been done with this. Uh, I don't know. Answering some more questions. Le uh, Lev C H. Any update on Marshall? You guys, I gave you the current update on Marshall. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not. You know, when it comes to these, like the news I give you guys or the stories I'm hearing, 
it's not something every single day that I'm hearing about. You know what I mean? If that was the case, I would have made another Marshall update video already. That hasn't been the case. As I said, that Marshall video is the most up-to-date current news you're going to get. I mean, it was no surprise after I released that video. I think it was a day or two after when, there, when reports were coming out about uh, United setting a, a price for Marshall. And that was ranging from like 70 million to 100 million. But, uh, but as I said, you guys, um, you know, that, that that's my answer. Dio Benini, would you bring back Birch and Girari? I don't think he'd want to come back. Um, I think he's a very good player. He's someone on the right-hand side. He's a goal scorer as well. I think I think he got like nearly 20 goals for Leon in his first season. And he was still injured for like a month and a bit during that season as well. He's a very good player. I keep telling you guys, to me, he is a Griezmann-esque type of player. I see him playing up front in the future. I think he's going to be one of those players that's going to surprise a lot of people in the next few years. The guy is very underrated and he's a fantastic football player. And I'll say this, you know, the circumstances in which we signed him, I didn't really play much football whatsoever. I mean, much much top-class youth football, you know, obviously coming from Burkina Faso and going on a lot of, uh, having a lot of trials at clubs as well. Now, for Mourinho to take him, uh, you know, um, for Mourinho to take Jarai to our pre-season tour, I mean, it says a lot about how much he rated him as a player. And uh, it's been no surprise. The guy's a goal scorer. He's only going to get better. And uh, I'm excited for his future. And I've got another super chat, I think. Let me double check. Joseph. I jo hey, appreciate that, man. Thanks a lot. Sorry, meant Ruben and Mason Mount. Oh, is better than Golovin. Don't want that guy in my club. And also, I feel Malcolm is better fit than Bailey in a sorry system. Now, cool. Again, bro, thank you for that super chat. It means a lot. I agree. I don't think Golovin is something that we really need. Not when there's Mason Mount and, and Ruben. Listen, if we had some, uh, you know, if we had other guys, let's say it was Wilshire and, and uh, I don't know, who's a dead midfield player that we have? I don't then yeah, I'll understand being linked with Golovin, but he's not a player that we need. And I don't think he's going to upgrade the team. I, I think we can target players where we have weaknesses in the team. That's what's going to benefit us overall. Um, I also feel Malcolm is a better fit than Bailey in a Sari system. To be honest, uh, Joseph, I don't really think there is much of a difference between these guys. I mean, of course, there's a difference in, 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 in a... It's like a difference in the few attributes that each possesses. I would say Malcolm is a better long shot taker than uh, Leon Bailey. I would say maybe Leon Bailey is like a tiny bit better at finishing compared to Malcolm. I think they're exactly... ...at their man. There isn't any difference between them. I think, you know, for these guys to be playing in a Sari system, I think they can definitely develop their game, especially when it comes to build-up play and keeping the ball and playing people in and, you know, that type of end product thing that we're always talking about with young wingers. I think that's what they can both learn to, to develop in their game. They are very direct threats. So, uh, yeah, in my opinion, I don't really think there's any difference between these guys. Okay, what other questions? Deluded Blue. Hey, I appreciate that, man. Thanks a lot. Bro, I didn't get your message. You guys, if you do send a super chat again, I do appreciate that. It does help the channel. But just double check that you've got your message in the super chat. Because I don't want you guys to waste your money unnecessarily. I'm going to try and find your message in the chat. But um, but yeah, you guys, if you do do that, just be careful. Just take another second. SP Danker. Yes, man. Okay, audio is fine now. Audio glitched for a bit. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 all right, cool, cool. Felipe, who do you think will leave the club in the summer? I think there'll be a few. I think... I think Cahill drink water and uh, yeah, I, th I think there's a few players. Uh, I think Pedro as well. I think it's a big chance William could be out as well. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of players leaving. Bara Kabani, what midfielder are we most likely to get? Uh, Seri from everything that I've heard currently. Again, you guys, when I'm hearing the Seri stuff and I, when I release the video, I'm, I mean, I swear it's like a week and a bit ago already now. I haven't heard anything new on Seri just yet. The only thing that I have heard, which isn't enough to make a video about, is that um obviously the link to Napoli is, uh you know, is similar to uh, the Blanc situation. It's just like a scapegoat in a way. 
Uh, it's just that, you know, Nisa trying to put pressure on Chelsea to pay the full buyout clause for Seri. I don't understand this insistence we have on always trying to get a deal every single time. I think it's unnecessary. I think it, wa it wastes a lot of time. I think there's certain contexts and, and scenarios in which you have to do that type of stuff. But uh, but again, I know Napoli are close to signing that guy from Real Batista. I forgot his name, that Spanish midfield player. I think he was pitching in Napoli a few days ago. I think that's the guy they're going to be using in midfield. So I don't see them going in for Napoli. It was just uh, Nice uh, bluffing, basically, to try and put pressure on Chelsea to complete the signature. But uh, out of any player, I I'd, I would say, from everything I've been hearing, I'd say that Seri is leading the race to be our first signing. Um, Deluded Blue, yes, I saw it. Uh, what were your thoughts on Rory's article? <laughs> Oh, I love it, you guys, man. I love it. I don't want to like... Here's the thing. You guys know my thoughts and opinions on CFC Fan TV. I've got nothing personal against them. You know, Sophie was nice any time I met them. Rory was nice uh, like the few times I met him too. Uh, I've only ever heard good things about Rory from people as well. So I'll never slander the guy at all. As I said, CFC Fan TV is obviously a collaborative effort from a lot of people. I just personally feel that the channel is very lazy with the content they do and everything. That's not an attack on the people. I'm not hating on them. I just think it's kind of lazy. And uh, with Rory's article, um, obviously it's good for him that he got an opportunity to write for the Daily Mail. I'm guessing, because the article was very short, that the Daily Mail only gave him a word cap. So, you know, if you do have a word cap, there's only so much he can talk about. For, I'd really struggle. If I was given, let's say, I don't know, 300 words 400 words and i'm and i'm told to talk about such like a, a detailed subject i'm definitely struggling i don't know what i'm going to be talking about but uh but um but yeah i mean that's the only thing i can say it doesn't really have uh didn't get too many words to really elaborate on certain things i think but uh but yeah that's what i'm gonna say on that <laughs> uh jan hey nini how did you like today's games? Are you going to do live streams tomorrow? Yep, I'm hoping to do some live streams for tomorrow. I'm not promising anything just yet. The videos I'm working on are my priority right now. So I'm hoping to get them done. Um, J Mojo Nini. When is Abramovich coming to the UK? I don't know. I'm, unfortunately, I don't have a personal connect to Abramovich like that. I'm not going to... I don't have his number either. So I can't give him a text. So yeah. But when it, when it comes to certain questions like that, like you guys do put me like, I don't know, it's, you can't be expecting me to give an answer to stuff like that. Why am I going to know when a Berenovic is going to be coming back? I don't know. I don't know what a billionaire does. Jordan, do you think Barkley is worth taking a punt under Sari? I think Barkley will have a chance. I think pre-season will be big for him. Um, Again, he does complement a Sari system in terms of you know, midfielders that do break the lines and attack the spaces, so he would definitely suit there. He'd be a good squad option to have when it comes down to that. I mean, sorry, he needs to have at least five mid. Um, up, fucking, up. he needs to have five midfield players in the team to do anything. So, Barkley's definitely got a chance. Um, Gustav, coming or not? Yep. Yeah. NZR Nini, do you think we should go in for Sal Niguez? I think he would do well on a midfield three. Yeah, again, another guy that complements that style of play. I don't think that the, I don't think we need to sign him. I think you know we do we do have Ruben, who's definitely the type of player that breaks the lines, as we saw in England's last game. I'm interested to see what would happen with Bakayoko. Um, I think we've got Mason Mount as well. He's only going to get much better. and can easily play in that role as well. I don't really think we need guys like Sal Nuguez, really, to be honest. Even though he is a good player, I just don't think he's necessarily going to, you know, take the team to another level in the fields. Adil Hassan, thoughts on Williams' shocking World Cup? Um, you know what? You know what? There's context to this Williams situation. I mean, William is definitely a dilemma. Maybe I should do a video on, a video on William in the future. That could be interesting. He is a dilemma. I, I mean... I'm always going to sympathise with him. His best position, as I keep saying, middle and on the and on the left. On the left, he's got Hazard at Chelsea. And for Brazil, he's got Neymar. So he can never play in his best position. He can't play in midfield because there's other players there needed for the tactical roles of the teams he's playing under. Every, William is a baller. Every player rates him. Hazard rates him. 
I mean, he's a very good, he's a very, he's a top class football player. I just feel that because there's players, he's un, he's unfortunate, you know, there's players that are better in his position. He's constantly been playing out of position. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's games like uh, what we're seeing uh, for Brazil, where you really notice that. Uh, William isn't really uh, necessarily like a playmaker. Yeah, he can play people in. But his main game is about being a direct threat on goal, taking shots, etc., etc. That's what he's about. Playing on the right hand side for Brazil. Oh, honestly, like this answer is gonna be so long. Honestly, I think I might just have to do a video on Willian. I think that he, he, the hate and criticism he gets is a bit too much. I think it's a bit too extreme, especially when there's a lot of factors going against Willian that no one ever wants to take in consideration. So. I definitely think it's harsh, to be honest. But uh, no way is this guy bad as what people are saying. No way. Um, CFC Anu Janini, do you think William can play as a cam next season? I don't think we'll be using that cam next season, bro. Uh, Beach Fraser, who is going to be our goalie? Uh, Courtois. Nicholas. Yes, Nicholas. Caballero. <laughs> Caballero, low. That's literally all you said. Joseph, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that, man. Please don't Higuain. Barkley will struggle. Bad touch. Yeah, I mean, again, Barkley was just a money maker. It's cynical. You guys, Conte, he said it himself in that press conference that it's a great investment signing for the club. And Conte had so many like low key digs every single time during his press conferences. There was literally no need for Barkley. I mean, honestly, if he was injured the whole season, would you even notice him? Did was there any was there was there any Fuck, why am I struggling with my words today? Was there ever a time last season where Barkley was really needed for any important games? I mean, he's, I mean, he's one of those players that you just forgot about. And I think when you become forgettable like that, you're not really needed. Um, Uday, any director, any director of football talks? Well, I did release a video, so I would watch that. And you guys, I like to, you know, I like to sprinkle my channel. I like to put everything in the correct playlist i like to update them all the time so you guys do get the current videos i do have a section called the must watch section that's going to be a section for all like the you know top news top discussion anything breaking all the big stuff so and and that director of football video is in that playlist so after this stream or if you want to go now i would suggest that you do watch that um k max check patreon doing that now i'll be doing that in a second uh poor poor Paul, Paul, I think the club will send Barkley out on loan to a mid-table Prem club like Watford. That would happen if they pay a lot of money. I'll give you guys an example. Uh, you know, when Stoke City got Zuma on loan, they actually paid £7 million to have him on loan for the season, which is a lot of money. Now, why do you think the uh, the loan army is such a, a money maker for the club? I mean, there's so many deals where players have gone for, for millions. And then... Having their wages uh, having their wages subsidized or paid outright, it ends up making a lot of money for the club. I mean, if I'm, I don't know if what's going to happen to Barkley, I really don't. As I keep stressing, when the manager's confirmed and it's preseason, that's when we're going to get a clear idea of what's going to be happening. I mean, I mean, if I had to give you guys, I mean, it's not even me. Anyone using logic will figure this out themselves. Preseason starts on the second of July. It seems like it's going to be common sense that any deal is going to be completed within the next 10 days. So that's just, uh, I mean, we're going to know who, you know, sorry in the next 10 days, basically. That's like the safest, you know, for everyone that's stressing out about sorry, sorry, when's he going to come, what's happening? Just tell yourselves, I'm going to have an answer within the next 10 days. Yeah, I think I've got another super chat. And sorry, you guys, if I'm sounding a bit nasally. I do get hay fever. It is kind of peak. I don't know why. I've got some more super chats. Appreciate that. Dan Hubbard. How many signings this summer? What positions? Um, There's going to be three to four key players that will be signed. Irrespective of players that do get sold. Any other players that we do sign. That's going to come down to who's leaving and who gets sold. But thank you for your question and your super chat. Craig Bryan. Thank you, man. Always supporting the channel. Means a lot. Nini, do you think there will be Nini, do you think there will be any shocks in the team like Moses coming in two seasons ago? 
that is an interesting question. I think maybe the only shock, probably Emerson, really. Uh, I think it has to be Emerson. I think he just suits playing under Saria, especially seeing what Gulam does for, for Napoli. You know, Alonso just can't provide that same style of football. So I think maybe Emerson, I mean, I know it's a very boring answer. I know that. But I think Emerson might be that guy. Any other surprise players? I'm not quite too sure, to be honest. Um, mm, I, I, I think maybe just Emerson, to be honest. I'm not sure about anyone else. I think uh, I think we've noticed surprises beforehand because we've had much more defensive style managers. So that's where we're seeing things like a three at the back and that's to be playing there. And obviously we need a wing back for a three at the back system. Uh, Moses fits the characteristics. Everyone was praising Conte a lot for that. Um, I mean, of course it was good, but I don't think it was amazing. Everyone's forgotten that Asmoa was it was the same exact situation. If you guys don't remember, Asmoa had a massive reputation in Italy when he was young. He was at Udinese, playing as a cam for them. Um, he signs, obviously, next season he's playing under Conte. And Conte reverts the team back uh, to a, a back three system. And he decides to use Asmara on the left because he feels that he complements a lot of what he wants. So uh, it's not the first time that Conte has done something like that. And, you know, common sense and logic will say that, well, if he's made something like this before, he's going to understand what type of attributes are needed to play at wing back. He probably noticed that for Moses fairly quickly. And this is why Moses didn't really have any stumbling block. I mean, literally, Moses, Moses just slotted into playing as a wing back. He didn't have any growing pains. He didn't have to get better in the position. Literally from his first game, boom. So, again, we see this stuff happen in football all the time. I don't think it's as deep, to be honest. But thank you for that super chat, bro. It means a lot. Yeah, real, this uh, hay fever. Real, my nose is so blocked right now. Flipping hell, mate. Uh, Saramash, Nini, what is the deal with UFF? Would we see you more often on that channel? Yeah, uh, UFF is like a network. They do pr produce a lot of content. I am hoping to do a lot more with UFF on the side. So, uh, you know, expect more things to happen with that in the future. Um, a lot of good people working there. Um, I, I, I see a lot of uh, negative things I get said about UFF. And it's just the annoying thing about the internet. I mean, people just... Oh, it is just frustrating. People just make up what they want to make up like i the amount of times i've noticed how many people make comments when they're just ignorant they don't know the full depth they don't know the full scale they don't know the full information at all yet they have the audacity to start uh you know sticking it on people when they don't even know the full scoop i mean it is just really frustrating people keep saying oh it's just arsenal fan tv trying to build more money well no arsenal fan tv if he wanted to he could just release another youtube channel irrespective of UFF and it would just blow and bang so I mean it's just common sense to think like that but I but nah nah I, I, like I said I'm hoping to do more stuff with UFF other questions Andrew Salmon Forsberg could be a decent option in midfield uh, maybe I guess someone I haven't really seen play too much so I can't really give too many thoughts and opinions on him uh, Pura Callum Hudson-Odoi or I think I missed it Sorry, I think I missed it. Oh, Callum Hudson-Odoi or Martial? Well, Martial number nine, Hudson-Odoi on the left. I don't, I don't see how they're interfering in each other's way, to be honest. Um, Deluded Blue, yes, man. Uh, Blue, you you on Twitter? Yeah, Blue, you on... Yeah, of course, yeah, I'm on Twitter. Yeah, Blue Lines CV on Twitter. I mean, you guys, a lot of people don't check the description, but all my information is in the description, so... If you want a link to my social media and everything, literally just go straight there. Nick Blakely. Yes, Nick. Thank you, man. You're good. Nini, what, what are our other striker targets besides Marshall? Well, it's the stuff that's been coming out. You know, obviously Lewandowski is one. I haven't had any updates with what's happening with him. Uh, I think uh, Icardi, but that's stuff coming out from Italy. And uh, Anthony, actually, I can't even say Anthony Plea because he's being linked on the right. But even then, Anthony Plea was just linked with Borussia watching Gladbach. So, uh, so yeah. Um, Emeraldo Brace, if course were left, would you take Kalo Navas in return? You know what? Kalo Navas always does well during international tournaments. Again, I think he's another guy that 
is underrated. He's nowhere near as bad as what people are saying. So I don't get why he gets so much hate all the time. FETV, what should be done with Hudson Adoy next season? I think he needs to stay with the club. He needs to stay. Unless some crazy loan move comes from a club that wants to use, like, let's say Monaco are like, oh, we want to use this guy on loan for the season, first team, then yeah, he should go. But again, the chances of that happening are very remote. I don't want to see this guy go to the championship. I don't see why. I don't want to see this guy play for some shitty Premier League team as well. As I keep saying, you know, keep this guy on the team. Let him be the understudy to Eden Hazard. I'm going to answer some Patreon questions right now. <sighs> Flipping out. K Max, yes, man, you good. You um, yo, thoughts on the provisional squad list being released? No Hudson Odoi or Mason Mount included in the list. I haven't seen the provisional squad released just yet, man. To be honest, so I can't really answer that just yet. Sorry about that, Elijah Howard. Um, re I also reckon Wilfred Zaha could be the best player outside the top six. Yes, would you would you like to see us link with him if we fail to seal Marshall? to seal Marshall again it's more to play on the left I mean let's be serious I mean we know that Eden Hazard plays on the left hand side if we're linked with Marshall we're trying to sign him we're not sign. we're not going to sign Marshall to play on the left that's where Hazard plays so if anything it's going to tell you you know it, it strengthens everything I've been saying that yep we are signing him to play as a number nine I think Zaha isn't a natural. He's not a number nine I would use for a top club like us. Again, he doesn't really have a history of scoring goals. He was one of the best players last season. Very underrated. I don't get why he didn't get enough praise or credit. Fantastic player. He really stepped up and went to another level. I definitely think that this guy needs to be playing at a higher level. I really do. But uh, but again, you're looking at the top clubs now. I'd probably say maybe only uh, maybe only Arsenal are the only team that could sign someone like that. To play on the left hand side, but uh, but yeah, Sahar's a fantastic player. Will Rayner, what do you th what do you think this preseason will offer in terms of youth and sorry, ball? Are you going to expect instant results? I'm not expecting anything instant. I think that it will take time. Let's remember a lot of the World Cup players won't be coming back until later on during preseason. Um, I, I think that it's not going to take super super long. I think the team will get used to it pretty quickly, to be honest, and uh. I'm expecting good things. Elijah, how... I guess a different question from another time. Hey, Nini, seen the latest article? I guess, yep. Okay, you guys. I'm going to be on for another 13 minutes before I go. So if anyone wants any questions answered or anything like that, remember, send a super chat. And, uh, you know, if I don't see your question, obviously, I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, Josh Clinton... What's happening with Masunda? Again, I keep saying this point all the time. When it comes to the manager being signed, and when he's officially in charge during preseason, that's when we're going to get a better understanding of players coming and going. So far with uh, Masunda, I think I read reports a while back of him being with Lil being linked with his services. Maybe, maybe. But then there's a lot of players that will be leaving as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if Masunda was sold with a buyback fee. Um, okay, deluded blue. Yes, bro. Might be jumping the gun, but can I say, but can I see Chelsea inserting buyback clauses for players we sell, but never actually utilize them? Why Rugani and not Aki doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean, again, this Rugani thing, I'm just being honest. I don't know anything that's happening with, with Rugani right now. That's This is literally stuff coming out from Italy. I haven't heard any single thing. Me, personally, I can't see why this makes any sense. I can't see why we'd be trying to sign uh, Rugani. I mean, I've read one report that a 32, 33 million bid was accepted. I mean, if it really was accepted, there would be a lot more news coming out today. So I'm not really taking everything that I'm reading too seriously, to be honest. As I said, this is why you don't see me releasing constant update videos on this player, or that player, or sorry every single day. I mean, I could, I could easily milk this shit, reword things differently. I make much more, mo I mean, I make a lot more money from doing that where it could actually become a full-time thing but I, I i think i've got responsibility for you guys i need to say the right things and for myself as well you know this is this is the reason why i started youtube if you guys saw that stupid tweet on twitter basically um i think some american uh, 
on TV was talking about Messi and Ronaldo and all the points he was making. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to have your opinion that you think Ronaldo is better. But, like, the logical conclusions he came to were just stupid and wrong. And I, and I was just thinking when I was watching this, this was the main reason as to why I wanted to start, uh, wanted to start a YouTube channel. I'm sick and tired of reactionary opinions. Sick and tired of seeing opinions that aren't well thought out. That don't take the full picture into consideration. Everything's based on a biased, uh, you know, feelings, opinion. And that's the type of shit I just really don't like. So, again, I'm never going to do that type of content on this. I'm not that type of guy. And that channel is not that type. Callum Ross. Shit, man. Thank you for that super chat, bro. It means a lot. Hey, Nini. Was wondering what you think of Alex Goldberg's Twitter videos. I like them a lot, even though I don't always agree. Keep up. I think it's a sick concept as well. I think that there should be more people shout more video content like that on Twitter. I think if it's, I think you know, speaking of Hudson Odoi in eighty six seconds, this player in eighty six seconds, I think it's a fantastic point. Uh, you get the points across that you want to make. I agree too. I don't necessarily always agree with everything he says, but that doesn't mean he's speaking for ignorance. Of course not. As I keep stressing all the time, I think once you know enough about football. Everything becomes objective. It just becomes maybe uh, I prefer this uh, certain style of play to this person who prefers another style of play, and then that's how you base your your opinions and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, Alex Goldberg, top guy, Calcio Podcast Land, sick podcast uh, guy. is He's an elite guy. Got elite opinions. I rate it. And again, I like the con. I like that concept. I like watching him. Eighty six seconds on this. Eighty six seconds on that. It's such a simple concept. As I said, I don't get why more people haven't tried something like that. He's one of the first I've seen to do something like that. And yeah, I, mean, I hope it continues. Um, who's your best ever Chelsea player? Mine is Drogba, Cam Rao. I would probably say... Um, my best, that is such a hard one. It's up there, uh, Lampards, Zola, Hazards and Drogba. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. A part of me feels Hazard because I've never seen a player so effortless playing for Chelsea. Of course, Drogba as well, one of the best strikers I've ever seen. Lampard, one of the greatest midfielders in the history of football. Zola, when I was young, it was literally Zola FC. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. Diobi Nini, if Chelsea are looking for a goal scorer, we should look at uh, Daishan Radan. I don't think he's ready just yet. I think he'd be someone where a loan move would be interesting, to be honest. I don't know if he's ready just yet. Uh, Ty B, Dark Twisted Fantasy or 808s? I like Dark Twisted Fantasy. I think 808s is a classic. I, I, was, I literally listened to the album again a few days ago and that shit still holds up. It still holds up. It's still timeless. Again, that was the album that started to change uh, music a lot in terms of the content artists were releasing, the beats, the 808 as well so that's what i mean it's under and and the, and the songs still stand up to this day and you know this shit came out like nearly what nine years ago when, they, when it's still holding up this strong then it just lets you know how much of a classic it is in my opinion uh harry clark is there any chance of us getting lewis campos or is Balak the only real contender at the moment again harry clark watch the video i released if you want to find that video it's really easy to find if you go to the um must watch playlist tab is literally right on the front page it's there i give you guys all the info on lewis campus um michael daniel loan redan to leeds on fm and he scored 25 goals yeah i think redan is someone that definitely needs a loan move i don't think uh the step up just yet is nah I, i'm not seeing the step up just yet dpnt what do you think about xxx honestly it's a shame you know what I'm going to answer the football questions at the end. I'll answer a few questions about anything. Uh, but yeah, you guys, five more minutes left for anything Chelsea related. Kwame Gorin, that if Seri comes, will be deep creating chances like how Jorginho was under Sari and Kante pressing high up the pitch and winning the ball like Alan. I don't know. I, I kind of feel that maybe Kante might be the one in the middle. I'm not, I mean, I, again, I can see Kante pushing up as well. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how he's going to fully utilise these guys in midfield. I think Seri is someone that can definitely play that Xavi role where you're not 
Plus task with staying deeper. I think that Kante can easily fulfill a Busquets role. I keep seeing it all the time. His passing, touch control, second touch pass. It's quick, incise. He always knows what he's doing. Arsene Wenger. Arsene Wenger's a guy that he he sees a footballer. He knows what makes a footballer. Was lavishing praise on Kante. You know why? It's not just because of how good he is defensively. It's just his footballing brain. And technique that goes with it as well. And this is why he's such a world-class player. But uh, I don't know. I, I I personally feel that maybe Sari could be going with Sari. Uh, fucking Sari. Uh, Kante in the middle. And Seri and Ruben uh, playing further up, you know. I think with Seri and his passing ability, he may be playing a bit closer where he's able to break the lines at times. And, and really be that link-up player, you know, for our front three with Hazard. With uh, Marshall potentially, Bailey potentially, etc., etc. So, uh, so yeah. Again, we're not going to be playing Conte ball anymore. So, we don't necessarily need Conte pushing up hard to win balls like left, right, and center. We don't, we don't need that type of stuff. Um, Jennifer Taylor, have you seen Williams' performance for Conte? Shocking. If Man United wants sixty million, we should take it hundred percent. Again, I feel I will be releasing a, a Williams video. It's just too much to explain. I'll literally be here for the next five minutes talking. It's a bit too boring. I expect that video to come soon. Tiggs. Yes, Tiggs. What are you saying, bro? I'm sure Sari is watching Chelsea players closely at the World Cup. I'm sure Sari already knows what he's going to be doing. I, I, I mean, you know what? It's not, it's not I'm sure he does. Obviously, the videos I released, he had to obviously sell his plans. Maybe, maybe there's... If there was one regret I had with that with the manager videos that I did release, I feel that um there was one point I didn't stress enough, and that was the point that when Chelsea were targeting these managers, it wasn't just um you know Chelsea trying to persuade these managers to sign for us. It was the managers trying to sell to Chelsea why they should be at the forefront and why they should be signed by the club. This is why guys like uh, Laurent Blanc charged him very upset and not happy. Uh, uh, this is why uh, Luis Enrique was even willing to lower his wages as well Thomas Tuchel liked it in the end he chose Paris and Japan Sari was the best candidate the club liked what he said the club liked what he was spoken about they liked the plans he had they liked the plans he had for certain players as well and uh, and yeah you know this wasn't a case of Chelsea looking for any type of manager and begging it with them to try and you know for them to sign for us it was managers selling to Chelsea why they're the best candidate. And you know, this is what happens in football. I wish I stressed upon that more when I was releasing those videos. But uh, but yeah. You guys, two more minutes. I'm going to answer some Patreon questions. Elijah Howard. Matthew Harding lower or shed upper? Uh, Matthew Harding... The atmosphere, I'd probably say. I sit in the East Stand, so that's literally the worst stand at Stamford Bridge when it comes to atmosphere. It's got one of the best, it's probably got the best view, but it's got the worst atmosphere. Will Rayner, Dilarentis says that we haven't made contact with Sari. Surely he's messing around, right? Maybe, as I said, I haven't been speaking to my source for the past two, three days. Obviously, he's in Russia right now in the World Cup. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to try to pretend to know I don't make up stuff. I literally only report what I get told. And that's what I'm going to stick with. That's what I'm going to do. That's why in my videos, I separate what the news is or what I hear for my opinion. Um, I, I don't know. For my logical opinion. Yeah, for my logical opinion, I don't think that... Uh, I think De Laurentiis is talking a bit of bullshit. Um, and I wouldn't really take what he's saying too seriously, to be honest. Okay, what other questions? Okay, Ayub, thank you for that super chat, man. Do you think Hazard will go if he has a good World Cup? I don't think he's going to go, even if he does have a good World Cup. So I wouldn't really worry too much about that. I think that Hazard will sign. I think when you know when he, when he has that official conversation with Sari, if he hasn't already, I think, yeah, he's optimistic. He's optimistic. So I see Hazard staying. I don't think Hazard's going to be leaving afterwards. Ugh, flipping hell this hate I don't know where it's coming from my nose is just fully blocked right now it's like my ears are ringing a bit too <laughs> this is mad this is mad you guys I'm gonna 
answer uh, what am I gonna answer one more or am I not mm. what am I gonna do I'll probably look to answer one more question you guys and then I'm gonna wrap this up and keep it moving okay okay Ezekiel would sorry I be allowed to smoke cigarettes in this in a dugout <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if Sarah is going to be allowed to do that or not. Honestly, I don't know. I'd like him to be able to. I don't see why it's a big deal. As long as he's not going to actually figure out... As long as he's not going to actually figure out on opposition managers or players or throw it on the pitch or flick it at the referee. It's not really a big deal to me. I don't know technically if there's a rule against that type of stuff. I'm not too PC, so I don't really care, to be honest. I like when people express their personality, even with certain things they say or whatever i like i've always liked people that just like being themselves and they're not ashamed of being themselves you know what i mean i think i've always thought that's pretty cool but i i think it'll be it'll be nice it'll be entertaining it will we'll definitely be entertaining uh malcolm x nini uh how to beat liverpool high press pep got smashed by liverpool don't compare the madrid match because madrid got lucky yeah they did get very lucky uh again i guess it's uh, Again, you try to press them back, I guess. <laughs> um, Tiggs, it's against Premier League rules, I think. Yeah, okay. So it looks like it is against the rules. Of course, it's going to be against Premier League rules. I mean, maybe maybe if cigarette companies were sponsoring the league, then they would be allowed. But, uh, you know, money rules in this country. Kwame Nini, do you, would you do a video on the importance of keeping Zuma? Yes, I will be doing that. I have already done a few things in regards to writing a basic script. I haven't even finished the script yet. I've done like a few paragraphs, made a few bullet points. But that is something I'm looking to do, to be honest. Um, Check my Twitter DM. Okay. Uh, I, I, normally, I won't ever do this. But you just, I just read what you, what you said. So, yeah. Okay. Yo, do you, again, again, it's, it's kind of cheeky. I'll allow it this time. But no one should be emailing me or, or sending me messages on Twitter to answer their question because I'm not doing that. It's literally for the q and A. If you don't see it, if I don't see it, then obviously I, there's nothing I can do about that. There is the option for super chat if you really want your question answered. As I said this time, I will allow it. But um, yo, do you think William will actually leave? We haven't given him a, a new contract either. I mean, again, it's a point I say quite a lot on this channel. I kind of feel sometimes I, I repeat myself a lot all the time. And I know that a lot of people hear this stuff. And I don't want to be boring. I don't want to be that guy saying the same stuff. I'm not trying to be no Alfred Padula here. You know what I mean? But um, but yeah, man, I mean, there's videos on my channel, to be honest. So if you want to get an answer, watch that Marshall video I released. Um, but yeah, you guys. I'm going to... I'm going to answer that last question someone gave me about XXX passing away. Obviously, uh, I've always liked his music. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but again, though, I'm one of them people where I can enjoy the art or the content you create. But then I can separate that from the person you are. At the same time, I am not. I don't have any ideas on, on XXX. With this, there's one thing with starting YouTube. There's definitely one thing I have noticed is that... It's how people can have mad, crazy opinions about you without ever knowing anything about you. And all their opinions are just based on, like, the, the 10 minutes they see in a video. You know what I mean? So let's say you say one thing wrong. Let's say you sound a bit cocky in one video. Let's say you say one joke that goes bad. Them small things you do obviously get amplified. And then people make up some next theories in your head about you. So, again, I don't know anything about what's happening in his past. I'm not even going to try and... And, uh, and and try and guess what he was like in his personal life. That's not really my problem. I don't know the guy. You don't know me. Again, I just liked him for the music he made. If there's one thing that I didn't like, though, is that I can't believe... Actually, no, I can believe because we're living in 2018. But people recording his death... Like, I, I can't believe... I still can't get out of my head that I was on the timeline on Twitter. I just happened to see one idiot must have retweeted it on Twitter... And I'm looking at this guy who's dead and passed away, and I'm thinking I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be seeing this. It, it felt like disrespectful. Didn't feel right. Like, I just didn't get how people, their first reaction was to start recording on Snapchat, start retweeting, start taking photos, this or that, this or that, and it just made me feel kind of sad. 
and it made it really did make me see social media with a very different light i'm not gonna lie it really did make me see things with a very very different light with how people are it's mad it's, it's mad it's mad but this is what real life is like and that earlier point i was making about people just trying to figure who you out from let's say like you know a 10 minute video or a three minute song or like a 20 minute interview blah 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 in a way you don't feel any type of responsibility for that person you know what i mean because you don't you don't fully know them you just know like things you've created in your head about these types of people and you know when you've got these types of ideas this is why you know you'll feel comfortable taking out snapchat to record someone dying this is why you'll be re comfortable recording it and doing shit this is why you don't feel any guilt or remorse for this type of stuff like there is like no um like uh there's no like social media etiquette, you know what I mean? And I kind of think with like, social media is a new thing. I mean, it's the first time really in history where you can come into contact with so many people, like thousands of people. And it's just like, I don't think our brains have really developed enough to understand and grasp, you know, being in, being in contact with that many people. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, we're not, like throughout history, it's always been about small groups, more this, more that. You know, it's not, it's never been anything about, you know, being in contact with so many people, communicating with so many people, doing all that type of shit. So I can see why, Is this is why you see so much fuck shit happening all the time. This is why you see this lack of et etiquette when it comes to social media and stuff like that. Because it's like, you don't even see the people you're talking about as people. They're just ideas, end of the day. They're ideas that you've been creating based on small information. And uh, and then that's enough, you know what I mean? But um. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like I said, it's made me move differently. If A lot of you guys would have clocked that I deleted all my tweets on Twitter. Like I literally deleted every single thing because I don't want to be no one that's getting caught making a mistake or having one thing used out of context or et cetera, et cetera. Especially when I already know people like to, uh, you know, screenshot this, record that, you know, take things out of context. I've already seen that type of shit. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to be moving professional from now on. I'll probably try to do more live streams like this. You know, if people want to try getting to know me, etc., etc., that will be for live streams and shit like that. But um, but yeah, social media is definitely a madness. I, again, rest in peace, XSX and Uh yeah, I mean, it was I, I, one thing I say the guy was an artist, you know, he, when he made music, he wasn't just making this com not I wouldn't say commercial shit, he wasn't making shit that is is that is gonna just uh you know that the safe type of records where you you know they've got like people in the lab that know what type of beat people enjoy and you know whatever's gonna like get the uh, get your brain receptive towards it you know he's an actual artist you know he likes to express himself uh you know his his beat selection was very unique as well yeah he, he introduced a new sound I, well actually he didn't introduce a new sound because you know when i when i think of his sound i think of artists like death grips you know what i mean like that type of like i wouldn't call it horror rap but like that loud type of rap you know what i mean but um but i mean again he was very uh experimental i think he was like he was a music artist that's the only thing i can say about him he was an artist he cared about making good records he cared about his craft and his art and pff, it's a mad it's mad isn't it? it is fully mad i can't believe he's dead it is mad it is mad but um but yeah you guys yeah you guys obviously rest in peace but uh, yeah, you guys, I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm kind of. I've had a long day. I've had work. Uh, yeah, I need to make something to eat now. It's been long. I've got an, a video I'm trying to get finished with tomorrow. So I'm working on that now. I'm gonna keep it moving. Thanks to everyone that came on the live stream with me. Thanks for all the super chats. Everyone that super chats, I appreciate it a lot. It does mean a lot. Thank you guys for just coming to interact. For giving me your questions. Sorry if I didn't see your questions and I can't answer all of them. I apologize for that. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Line CV. Signing out.